Welcome everyone to the new Let's Play series for Stonehearth. Stonehearth is a, an early access game right now on Steam. It is a city builder strategy type game where you'll take control of a group of villagers and try to grow and maintain your village by feeding the villagers, keeping them protected, and you'll do things such as build homes for them and mine various materials and minerals so that they can increase their wealth. So we start out on the new game screen and we have a choice of two different groups here. The Ascendancy is the most fleshed out at this point in time. Remember, this is an early access game. And we have another group that is primarily for the desert, but they're not quite as fleshed out. Now, I believe they will be receiving some more updates soon with another alpha release. We're on, currently on alpha 18 and preparing for alpha 19, which I believe will have a lot more content for this group. But we're going to choose the Ascendancy. And next, we'll get to choose where we want to, to go. So we'll get to select a biome, temperate or desert. We're going to choose the temperate biome. And then finally, our difficulty level, peaceful, where there'll be no invasions whatsoever, normal and hard. We're going to choose normal, as the combat in this game can be quite difficult. Here, you see our original seven settlers. You can have a maximum of, I believe, 50 Settlers maximum in the village should you last that long and be able to maintain and feed everyone and ward off the uh, invaders. And we've got various different talents. So on this screen, one of the primary things we need to do is choose how to spend 150 gold. Now, I'm going to choose the trapper's knife because the trapper will trap small animals and small game and is an excellent source of food and materials early in the game. Besides, the farmer's hoe, wooden sword, and things like that, I can always make a little bit later as we get into the game. So I'm going to start with the trapper's knife. And then let's take a quick look at the three different characteristics of each of our villagers. We have mind, body, and spirit. The mind affects their ability in, in certain professions, such as crafting. The body is their strength, speed, stamina, that type of thing. And then finally, the spirit is their willpower and courage, mostly. So you can imagine you want your foot soldiers, your army, to have high numbers in body and spirit. And you want craftsmen such as carpenters and the like to have a higher level on the mind characteristic. So let's go ahead and embark. And we'll get started. You can see here's the world seat at the bottom. And it gives us the area where we're going to be able to spawn. Now, the area that you see around the, the yellow cursor that I, as I'm moving it around the screen is the, the playable area that we're going to have in the game. Now, some areas that jump out to me because uh, they're areas that I think would be very good for us to spawn in would be over in this area or over in this area. And the reason is, if you'll look to the right-hand side of the screen, as we move around the map, you can see different areas such as mountain peaks, mountains, foothills, plains, and then, of course, water are labeled along with three attributes, trees and plants, wildlife, and minerals. I'm concerned with having plants and wildlife mostly, but, of course, we'll need minerals later on in the game. So I'm going to choose an area such as right about here. Okay, that should be good. Let's go ahead and settle here. Okay, the world has been generated and we're ready to go. Now you can see I've chosen sort of a, a narrow area with multiple tiers. What I'm going to do is look around for just a moment before we spawn. Automatically, I see berry bushes that will be great as an early source of food. And I also see, of course, many trees. And I see areas that we can easily block off from invaders. And it will make it a little easier to protect our territory. So I like several things that are going on here. All right, so I think we're going to actually place... Let's go ahead and place down our banner to get started. This is where our, our spawn is going to be. We're going to spawn 
right here. Okay, and let's go ahead and name our our city, which is going our village is going to be Nepitopia. All right, so now here we go. Immediately, I see a few things. I see some wildlife around. That's why we got the trapper. So that'll be an early source of food. I also see a little bit of stone laying around and a lot of trees. So we're going to go ahead and get started by gathering in a large area. So let's go ahead and set this area for them to clear. Okay, let's go ahead and unpause the game. So we want them to go ahead and clear this area out. And what I need to do is for now, I'm going to give them a zone to place all of this material. And for now, I'm just going to mark that right over here. And you can see that for this particular area, I can choose what I want to be able to be stored here as well as what I don't want to be restored here. For now, we're going to allow everything to be stored here. And momentarily, we are going to, okay, now that they're getting this area cleared out, we're going to start building. But before we do that, let's slow down things a little bit. And let's go take a look at our hearthlings or villagers. And let's see who we want to be our first one to be promoted. Because we need a carpenter. So we've got five on mine. That's a very good stat. Three, four, three, six. Wow, very nice. And one. Okay, I like this one. This guy, would not. I would not want him to be a soldier because he's not very strong. This guy also not strong either. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and go with this one and make them the carpenter. Carpenter's going to be in charge of doing most of our building. Okay, and as the carpenter goes through his deal and becomes... A carpenter, we're going to want him to go ahead and get started. And what we need first is the workbench. So let's go ahead and have him craft one workbench. And he'll get started on that. In the meantime, oh, he's already done. Good. So let's go ahead and move the camera around. And let's have him place this in the world, again, right here just for the time being. Okay, let's go ahead and have these guys clear out some more land for us right there. And we've got a traveler that's approached, and it's going to give us some food to get started. Excellent. That's exactly what we need. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and get some food from these bushes as well. That'll give us a great source of early game food. And I'm also going to get started building. Now... The building mechanics here in in the game are interesting. You can either choose pre-built homes and uh, professional buildings, or you can choose to design your own. And we'll see that in just a moment. First, let's take a look at what our carpenter can do. Now, these tools and weapons are his ability to craft things for other professions so that we can make other professions. For example, in order for him to make a farmer's hoe so we can get a farmer, we need, he needs to be of level two. Right now, he's not there. He's at a level zero. Level one for a weaver and level one also for a our first soldier. So we need to get this guy working so that he can make some of these other professional tools so we can get going. So let's go ahead and start building. So let's go ahead and place a building. And we're going to use, here are some of the pre-built homes. You see a carpenter's home, you know, small cottages, dining halls, and so forth. Well, I've made a basic house for 12. So let's go ahead and take a look here. This is the front of the home. All of these that I've designed are very basic. And the reason they're very basic is because what I want more than anything is for the carpenter to be able to build these right away. So we're going to stick this, this building right over here in the corner. Just a little bit of room. There we go. So now it's asking me, you know, we're missing all these components, but that's okay. We'll take care of that with our carpenter. And let's go ahead and start building. 
All right, as these guys, all our workers get busy doing that, let's look around and see if there's a good area for us to do some trapping. And actually, I believe that I see a good area over here that would probably be very nice for some trapping. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the zones. We can mark stockpiles, which we've already seen over here. We can mark farming zones, trapping zones, and an animal pasture. Okay, But before we can do anything, we need to assign a trapper. Okay, and so let's go in and take a look at our hearthlings, our villagers. So you can see right here we have we have our carpenter already, and so oop, our carpenter just reached level one. That's excellent. So things are progressing. So we've got I'd like to have someone with a higher spirit number and lower. There we go. This will be perfect. Lower. Uh, body number because this guy's not going to be a fighter. So let's go ahead and have you change jobs and make you a trapper. Okay, so this guy's going to come over and he's going to get the trapper's knife. And now we have to assign him some zones as soon as he gets done with that. This will open up the zones. Okay, so now he is a trapper. And we are going to assign him the zone of... All of this area, let's see, let's do it this way. You can do a 50 by 50 area at one time. So we're going to go ahead and do that. As well as for now, yeah, for now, let's go ahead and do another one right here. All right, so our trapper will come over and he will set out traps in these various areas and hopefully he will catch us some food and some hide and some different things like that. Let's go ahead and speed things up. Let's go back and see what else we can get to. Remember, we need a level two carpenter to, uh, in order to get a farmer. So we're working toward that. Let's go ahead and have this guy make a weaver spindle, but we're not there yet. Oh, he just reached carpenter level two. So some things just opened up for us. So let's go ahead and craft a farmer's hoe. But in this case, I don't want him to just craft one and forget about it. I want him to maintain one so that I can always assign an additional farmer when I need to. And I'm going to have him go ahead and put this at the top of the priority list. And I'm going to have him go ahead and make one wooden sword and maintain one at all times so that I can assign new soldiers when I need to. Okay, so now you can see, as well as the two items that I've just assigned him with the farmer's hoe and the practice sword, he's also making the items we need for our building, which is excellent because that's exactly what we need him to do. This is how we're going to get him leveled up pretty quickly. Another thing I want him to work on will be the basic carpenter home. And you can see this is a small area. So let's go ahead and build this. And I'm going to once again change this around. Let's see. I want him one more time. There we go. And I'm actually going to try to line these up. There we go. And I'm going to put it right there. Because for future reference, I've got designs on, on doing some things on top of these buildings. But we'll see how that goes for the future. All right. For now, let's go ahead and pause the building of this one. And let these folks go ahead and get started here. All right. As you can see, he's gone ahead and he's made the farmer's hoe and our beginning level sword. So we're going to go ahead and choose our first foot soldier. Okay. Somebody who has a very high spirit level. There's a five, four. So I believe this will be our perfect candidate. 
And you can see now our foot soldier is highlighted with the ability to upgrade later on. So foot soldier, we now have our first foot soldier. Okay, now we need, all right, excellent. So you can see we have the ability to make him attack, defend, or move him to a location. Okay, for now, you can see he's just on patrol. He's just going to roam around until trouble arrives, and then he's going to take care of us, hopefully. Now, we're going to need a whole lot more than one foot soldier, but for now, that will have to do based on what all we have for resources. Okay, so let's look at our last four, and one of these will need to be our farmer. And I think we're going to choose... Yeah, I think we're going to choose this one, and you're going to be our farmer. Okay, so you may ask, where are we going to farm? Well, we're going to farm over in this area. Okay, so... Okay, we've got our farmer going through the process. Now we open up our farming zones. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is designate the areas for farming... And I'm going to designate just very simple 11 by 11 areas. And we're going to start out with turnips, carrots, and pumpkins. But if you'll notice, there are several more items, that, but we're going to have to purchase those or get those from traders as they come by. All right, now let's look around. There's one more item that I'm looking for, which is right here, silkweed. We will need that. So let's go ahead and go to our harvest and have these folks harvest this silkweed. Okay, we're going to turn up the pace a little bit here. As you can see, they're making good progress so far. And here's our first daily update. Okay, we can grow our village each day by meeting these criteria. So they want to make sure that we have plenty of food, we have good morale, and we have high net worth. Now, the food is self-explanatory, and we're going to be addressing that with our farmer as well as the trapper. Morale is good because they have plenty of food and we're building some accommodations for them to sleep and eat at. And we also are going to be working on net worth. Net worth, as you can see here, uh, we can accumulate gold, but also buildings will increase our net worth. So we don't have enough to get a new villager today, but that's okay. I knew that was going to happen because it's going to take a day or two before we can really get things rolling here. All right, let's go ahead and see what else our carpenter can get into here. All right, so we're about to have some bundles of fiber. We've already got our first foot soldier, our first farmer, and we can have an herbalist. So herbalists are for healing, and we're not quite ready to do that because, again, we don't have all the necessary equipment. A mason, we'll want to get there pretty quickly, but we need a level two carpenter to do so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and queue this up so that he will make this as soon as he can. So we scroll down and we see that's in the making. Same thing with the shepherd's crook. I'm going to hit, even though we need to be level five there, I'm going to go ahead and have him craft one of these in the queue so that whenever he gets to the point where he can make these, he'll go ahead and do so. All right, so everybody is, is busy doing what needs to be done so far. We've got one foot soldier who is marching around, and now we have a level three carpenter. Excellent. Okay, we see our message there. Level three carpenter. And what can he do as a level three carpenter? Well, let's take a look. 
that opens up the mason's chisel, but we need stone for that. All right, so the question is, where are we going to get some stone? Well, we're going to get some stone by mining. And we're going to set up some levels over here just to have these guys mine. And we're going to start with that area. So they're going to cut into the side of the hill there. And it looks like we got a caravan approaching. Oh, no, nope, they're gone. Okay, so we've got some food here. And let's go ahead and have them... Let's see, our farmer must be asleep or or eating. Yeah, there you can see now inside the building, I have beds for them to sleep in. Again, enough for 12 beds for them to sleep in and tables for them to eat at. This will increase their happiness. All right, so now we have a level one trapper. Excellent. His health goes up. He gets faster as well. So he's busy over here trapping, and you can see hide over here that he is collecting for us. So things are going going good. So we have a farmer over here, as you can see, has already started the process of, of farming and growing some crops for us. We've got a trapper that's hard at work over here getting food and pelts for us. We've got our carpenter over here making building supplies so we can all have beds and tables to eat at. So we've got a lot going on. Again, one of the things I would definitely recommend for you in this game is to keep things simple early on with your buildings. Both of these buildings that that I've designed use nothing more than an entry-level carpenter as well as uh, nothing but basic wood supplies. So nothing that you need high-level villagers for. And that's the way I designed it so that we could make sure that we always keep things simple. All right, so we've got a carpenter workbench, which he's made, because that's got to, that's going to be going into a different area. Okay, the carpenter's tool bench is also ready. We've got another sword here. And we're off and running. Let's see what all he's working on. All right, those he's already got. And, oh, here's one item here. So a window box. This is purely for decoration, but it requires flowers. So we need to go find some flowers. And I believe I saw some right over here. So we're going to go ahead and have these guys pick these flowers. And see if there's any more around. Let's see. Let's go ahead and have them get some more fiber. And there's some more flowers right there and some more there. Okay, so things are progressing, and we're headed toward day two. We're now late at night, day one. You can see the time in the top right-hand corner by scrolling over the moon icon here. You can see it's nearly 2 o'clock a.m., and we've got activity going fast and furious. Now, one of the things you'll have to deal with is once your buildings start to go up, you'll notice I can no longer see inside. Well, that brings these three items into view. Now we've got building vision, which changes the visibility of walls and allows you to see inside. So if I do that, I click one side, it basically removes the walls and the roof that were in my, in my view and keeping me from seeing everything. So as you can see as I rotate the camera around, how it changes what's visible and what's not. Love that aspect of the game. You can also do this again, and it will show you no walls at all, whether they're blocking your view or not. So we're going to go ahead and change this to the second building vision level. You can also do terrain slices. This is useful for various elevations and particularly useful if you decide to dig a mine down into the ground. So let's go ahead and, and show this. There you can show... See how the, the uppermost elevation is now gone, and now it's back. So you look at x-ray, now we can see below, the area below the terrain, and now it's back. So you've got some different areas for visibility and what works for you and what doesn't. So let's go ahead and 
see how things progressing. I'm going to go ahead and put this back. You can see they're done with the top and they've left a block of wood up there. And you can tell that they're almost done because they're removing the scaffolding off the side of the building. Okay, so we don't quite have enough food, but everything else, we're looking good. Okay, so one more day, we ought to be able to get enough food, hopefully. And so they're removing the scaffolding, which means this building is either completely done or very nearly done. And that is exactly what I want to see. With that in mind, let's go ahead and and continue building this one and unpause that so they'll get started there and let's go ahead and set a few more zones for harvesting let's go ahead and harvest these again and there's some more out here let's harvest those you can see everybody right now is building so they're not doing any harvesting well we can take care of that we have some options for you can see Options for hauling things. Who do you want to build? Who do you want to mine? And for now, I tell you what, let's go ahead and make one for mining, one for hauling, and one for just miscellaneous things. So let's just go ahead and leave him open to do whatever needs to be done. So that way we can move things around and we can start to get... Let's see, oh, we have invaders approaching and a bunch of them. So this may not last long at all. Let's go ahead and, oops, wrong one, sound the alarm. All right, so that will get the villagers hopefully out of harm's way. And so the villagers are running away. Where is our soldier? All right, so we got the fighters. There's our foot soldiers. So they're trying to take care of these guys. These are hunks of stone. Hopefully none of we don't lose any of our villagers doing this. All right, we've also got a trader that has shown up in the middle of all of this. And the, I'm sorry, these are not blocks of stone. They're actually blocks of wood that are attacking us. So we got it. You can see a villager there that's running away. All right, and. Looks like they've almost taken care of them, and they're done. Okay, so let's get rid of that and let them go about their business. So now you can see we've got a trader that has arrived, and let's see what the trader has for us. So he's got some different furniture options, some resources, which logs we don't for sure don't need any of these. And he's got lights. So all of these things we can make on our own. Let's see if there's anything we've got to sell. And nothing really right now that I want to sell, quite frankly. And But I tell you what, let's go ahead and sell this and sell this. So that'll make us a little bit of money. And as you can see, our we have our worker here who is collecting. He's already collected some here. And we've got our farmer who has done a lot more work over here on the side. Our trapper is hard at work trying to get us some more food. So let's go ahead and speed up time. And let's see if we can bring in some more food. The difficult thing about growing food early on is that you can see they're taking it. To eat it so it makes it very hard for us to, to get a surplus of food going on uh, wow our trapper is doing great out here looks like he's got four animals trapped right here so our trapper is really doing an excellent job for us and our first building is complete complete with log on top as you can see, we've got beds for 12. Now, these are entry-level beds. We'll want to replace these with more comfortable beds later on. But we've got that. So we've got beds for 12 and then also enough space for 10 people to eat at a time. All 
All right, so as you can see, our carpenter has already replaced the items that we just sold. And now we've got a level two trapper. So now he has the opportunity to advance, it says here. So let's take a quick look at that. So let's find our trapper who is right here and let's click on change jobs and see what opportunities he'll have. The opportunity he has is to turn into a shepherd where he'll be able to take animals. We'll make uh, areas for the animals and we can actually raise animals. But for this particular level, we're not quite there yet. We want to keep him as a trapper until we get a, a very good food supply going. All right, so we're nearing the end of our first video. Things are progressing well. We've got a completed building. We've got a farmer who is doing great work over here. You can see already plenty of food that is either already been harvested or is nearing being ready for harvesting. We've got our trapper that's over here collecting hides and food and workers busy working away. Let's go ahead and add one more item for them to clear this area because we're going to want to expand at some point. All right, so as we end our second day here, we're going to go ahead and call it a video here. I hope you've enjoyed the video. hope you've enjoyed seeing the beginnings of Stone Hearth and our wonderful village therein. Hope you join us next time as we continue to explore Stone Hearth.